On March 11, an NFT by digital artist Beeple was sold for a record price of $69 million at a Christie's auction. Before NFTs, crypto was boring. Being able to contribute to art, that is what is going to reach the next generation. The buyer was a crypto entrepreneur known under the pseudonym of Metacoven. So what makes Beeple more valuable than Leonardo da Vinci, according to you? Doing something consistent. Uh, and, and with integrity and, and with honor, that's something people embodies. To many, the sale of people NFT marked the entrance of blockchain-based art into the mainstream. But others saw it as the tipping point of a speculative hype that's disconnected from real artistic value. We are really going to see mainstream adoption through NFTs. And if there is speculation, that's okay, because we are just making everything fast. What were the motives behind the most expensive NFT sale ever? And can non-fungible tokens really disrupt the way we create, value and consume art? To answer these questions, we reached out to the winner of the auction, Meta Coven, and his business partner, Tubadur. Not long ago, you revealed your real names uh, and uh, uh, you, you did it because uh, you wanted to bring attention to the fact that Indian people and people of color, uh, they could be art patrons too, that crypto is an equalizing power between the West and the rest, and that the global South uh, was rising. And so there is actually um, a, a social component in, the, in, in, the, in, in your decision to reveal your real identities. Before NFTs, crypto was boring, right? Like we were just making money for, for most of the time. Now. It's, it has gotten to a point where, you know, we get to interact with culture uh, and drive culture. Uh, you work with artists, you work with the artists from all over the world, right? So that, that specific idea of, of being able to uh, contribute to art and, and pat, like patronizing art is very important because that is what is going to be uh, that is what is going to reach the next generation, right? So now what's happening is the the whole idea of of this being centralized and 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 being in some parts of the world is going to go away. So with the NFTs and this movement that's going on, what we are doing is we are decentralizing culture and decentralizing markets as a result. You recently bought the, the NFT of Beeple's every day, the first 5,000 days for $69 million. So what exactly attracted you to this specific work of art? So Beeple himself uh, started this specific work of art in 2007. Uh, this generation uh, of, of the internet generation who, who we are all, we are all, um, we, we, we all lack that patience of growth, right? Like we all, we all want to grow immediately and tomorrow, right? But that value of doing something consistent uh, and, and with integrity and, and with honor is something that, that does not just go away because now we are on crypto, right? And, and that's something people embodies. As an artist, he has performed this this art over 5000 days every day without taking a break not even one day he was doing this when 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 he was getting married when he had his child imagine imagine being a father right like and, and still uh, like making sure to take some time to do something and that consistency is very interesting because end of the day, time is not hackable. In a recent statement released by Christie's, uh, you defined your purchase as the crown jewel, the most valuable piece of art for this generation. You also said that it should be worth $1 billion. So that sounds like a lot of money, considering that the most expensive work of art ever sold, uh, Leonardo da Vinci's Salvatore Mundi, was sold for $450 million a, a few years ago. So what makes people more valuable than Leonardo da Vinci, according to you? It, it's not just the artist, right? Like, so obviously, uh, I don't want to take anything away from Leonardo da Vinci or Salvador Mundi, because they, those all carry a very historical uh, is historical importance to them, right? I've been holding this thesis for a while now, where I where I believe and I can define NFTs as being 10x better than the physical counterpart when it comes to art, right? I know it's a it's a statement that that might shock a lot of people, but global market, 
uh, not, not susceptible, uh, susceptible to wear and tear, uh, the prominence being very clear, right? And, and NFT is being composable like other DeFi protocols by default is a huge, huge improvement on, on the physical art because physical art, what do you get to do with it? Maybe you have to keep it in one place and there is a limited number of eyes that, that go on it. And even if you talk about Salvador Mundi or, or, or Mona Lisa, most of them have only experienced them through, through an image, a copy, right? Like a digital copy mostly on their, on their phone or computer or whatever. But that, this, this digitally native picture, the, the art that, be, that is backed by this NFT becomes the movement, right? Like it's the, it's the beacon piece of this whole movement that's about to come where there is going to be so many more NFTs that come out from artists. Um, yeah, I would like to dive into a little bit more into your investment thesis on NFTs. You said that uh, NFTs are 10 times more valuable than their physical counterparts, uh, but uh, there are a lot of criticism about, about that. There are people in the traditional uh, art world that, that say uh, NFTs at the end of the day are just uh, a certificate uh, of um, ownership on the blockchain, which uh, you cannot touch, you cannot uh, experience with your senses, while in the physical world uh, you have a piece of art which you can touch, you can watch, you can look at, and you can derive ple pleasure from it, aesthetical pleasure. So uh, how, what is your investment thesis about NFTs? Why do you think uh, they, are, they are so valuable compared to physical art? The same uh, reason I, I've been talking about, it's, it's a comparison of gold and Bitcoin, right? Yes, gold, you can touch, you can, you can feel it. There is, there is this uh, physicality to it. But I also believe that Bitcoin is more valuable than gold, right? Because it's, it's global um, in the same way NFTs, right? Like NFTs are global. It's easily transfer, transferable. There is no restriction on on, on who can hold it, where can it be? Like you don't need physical space for it, right? Like, like if you have 100,000 pieces of physical art, you'll be spending so much money just to store them. Now there is no storage cost to it. I understand that people are deriving that emotional value of having a, having a physical counterpart, but digital uh, NF, uh, NFTs can also have physical counterparts, right? Like we can, you can print them. Like for example, people made these physical pieces which, which you could enjoy because of the flexibility that these NFTs offer and the composability into the DeFi uh, platforms natively uh, and, and without having to securitize these um, uh, pieces of NFT, you can, you can still share ownership. There are so many uh, perspectives to them that gives a huge extra value proposition, if you ask me. So maybe uh, the physical, uh, the people who are physical maximalists, maybe they might not get it for a while. Yeah, I guess that uh, it will take a while for some people to understand exactly what this technology means for art. But I also have like a question for you guys. So uh, apparently, I mean, NFTs, a strong point of, of NFTs is uh, the, the concept of scarcity. As, as you said, they are comparable to Bitcoin in the sense that Bitcoin is, is scarce and that, and that is um, the origin of its value. Uh, NFTs also derive their value from, from the fact that they are unique. You can make one NFT uh, proving the uh, authenticity of that work of art, but uh, can't the same artist uh, do another NFT connecting it to the same work of art and thus kind of uh, diminishing the value of the, of the previous NFT? Like, yeah, that's uh, to a large extent what you're saying is right. And uh, so we are not in the space of, you know, totally trustless um, um, scarcity, right? Like it's not like Bitcoin, there's only going to be 21 million pieces and that's it, right? Uh, yes, all these artists today uh, who we are looking at from the NF in the NFT space have to understand that, that as a collector, we do trust them to an extent that they will be honorable, right? And they will make sure that they don't, uh, they don't flood their market with their own NFTs, right? or create duplicate NFTs, et cetera. It's, it's totally a trust-based uh, system. It has no legal basis. 
it, we cannot i cannot force people to do something or not do something right so whenever we buy an nft it's like buying exactly an autographed piece of this right and and it, it, it's a it's a point in history and so we believe that he would not do it again now if he does it again then it it spoils his whole um you know, like aura. A lot of people are seeing this uh, NFT craze as a bubble. So do you think that uh, this uh, kind of hype around it will endure or there will be a, a point where this bubble will burst and uh, there will be a crash? Um, again, uh, I'm not very good at predicting <laughs> bubbles and, and bubbles. Being collectors ourselves, what we are doing is going with the flow, right? So we go up with the with the tide and if the tide is going to go down we are going to go down with it but i think if the tide does go down it's temporary so more than thinking about it as a bubble which is going to burst and and nothing going, is going to exist forever i think we have already created the impact on a global level let's not talk about people for a second and think about every other artist in the world who's not making any money right now right for them hundred dollars maybe five hundred dollars thousand dollars is very interesting so all those people after what what happened to this sale uh, in different parts of the world are thinking how do i get into this and we are already seeing that movement happening so have we triggered all these artists to already try uh, like adopt crypto yes and so we are already winning right so this could be a bubble where prices are up and at some point the prices might you know crash and and uh, we we might not have any activity for for some time but that's just speculation after that nfts are going to still stay and they'll be stronger and it will it will evolve these nfts are going to evolve in different forms we're going to see more collaboration between artists um, we are going to re like i believe that we are really going to see mainstream adoption through nfts right and and a lot of people are going to get it. Uh, introduced to crypto by NFTs first, like what NBA Top Shot did to a lot of people, right? So either collectibles, art, gaming, etc., is going to be how most of the people are going to get into NFTs. So if it's a bubble, so be it. But it's nice because we are attracting so many people right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's funny how most, how a lot of those things that you just said remind me of uh, the discourse around Bitcoin. So uh, this concept of the bubble growing, but then uh, the fundamentals which will remain and that, and that uh, will make the price go up again. How much do you think the uh, future development and success of NFTs is bound to the success of Bitcoin? We are, um, as I said, this in a, in a, in a way, we are, uh, we are the new class, uh, the decentralized class. And decentralized classes the basis of that is bitcoin right like so bitcoin is our mother asset and, and ethereum is is the is, is the second most important asset for us so end of the day if, if all these things are going to go up and down the nfts are also going to move up and down but uh, i i also feel like there's going to be a reverse correlation where nfts are going to affect the prices of these assets uh to to an extent at least in a, in, a, in a year or so when we see a lot more people using NFTs, right? So, it, like, because right now, Bitcoin and Ethereum, what is it being used for, right? Like, Ethereum is speculative and DeFi is super speculative. Uh, so, what is this, what is, what are we using these uh, currencies, cryptocurrencies for, right? And what better than buying a native uh, uh, product of the of the of the digital world which is which is nft so we have created this circular economy now where i think uh, people who are who have ethereum are paying that to artists and artists who have ethereum now are paying it to more artists and those people are exchanging it for money for the real world so last year you purchased a number of artworks uh, by people and divided the, their ownership into blockchain based tokens called uh, b20 you kept the majority for yourself and sold uh, most of the rest uh, in a public sale so what is the rationale behind fractionalizing ownership of a work of art as far as fractionalization is uh, uh, concerned it was again an experiment in trying to share ownership of art thereby making this open experience a viable concept 
up until now you either you know you bought art today and flipped it for a higher price or you bought art and locked it away somewhere but the fact that there is a third option in which you can open up uh, the experience of art to the entire community had stopped being financially viable for a really long time now it is you realize that you know there is faith in this this sort of a model and today over 5500 people hold those b20 tokens effectively sharing ownership the entire experience uh, so the revelation that prior to the crisis auctions you were already one of the biggest collectors of uh, people's work uh, sparked uh, widespread criticism uh, the day you won the auction at christie's the value of your b20 tokens increased by 51 million dollars and the fact that you financially profited from uh, the auction uh, sparked criticism around the speculative nature of the sale and of the NFT market in general. A recent article by the Financial Times said that the sale should not be thought of as representing the true market value of NFTs, but rather as a PR expenditure. So how would you respond to this kind of criticism? Okay, so first thing, like with B20, it should not be thought of as we fractionize people right like that was not yeah. what we did what we did was a very interesting project we did a crypto native right like a crypto native project uh, first of its kind we built museums we bought land we put the land uh, we built we put the museum on the land in the virtual world we put music in these museums and made nfts for all of that right and then put these art in these walls made it an experience put all those nfts together in a bundle a smart contract and then tokenize that what b20s i kept back was not so that i can sell it at some point in time but i kept it so that i knew this was an experiment and when i initially sold it also i didn't sell it for 10x i sold it for a little more than what we bought for 30 percent more right and if i kept all the people to myself it'll be more valuable in terms of financial upside for me and it would have been easier for me to sell those single pieces right now right because christie's auction if we participated or not was historic that's very different from all of this and if if i even had the thought for a second that i i, I had this financial incentive to do this uh, like and if someone can prove that you know this was why i did this i'll just stop everything i'm doing right because that's not my intention my intention is to show that this is possible we are we are in a on a mission here a greater mission to make something awesome and bring a lot of artists into it what we should understand here is that there is this war uh, a narrative war that is brewing between between crypto and non crypto and this is just an example and a lot of people are going to pull me down i'm ready to fight those were metakovan and tubadur from uh, nft fund metapors i'm giovanni your host as always if you enjoyed the interview don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe to our channel